Welcome back everybody. My name is Ben Schubert. I am a filmmaker based in Vancouver and today I want to talk about editing machines. I have been looking to upgrade my editing suite for the last year. I was starting to make my decision and I was pretty sure I knew which computer I was going to get until the new Mac Pro dropped. It hit a lot of the things that I was looking for. Plus, it has the future upgrade ability and this computer harkened back to the old Mac Pros, you know, the old towers, where you could upgrade them. They would last you a long time. If I bought the 2019 Mac Pro, that's a computer I would have until 2029. And right then, I just knew, just clicked, I knew exactly the computer that I should be getting. That's right, I got the 2009 Mac Pro. It came with a quad core, that's right, two duo processors, each doing 2.66 gigahertz, a whopping six gigabytes of RAM, no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and this old video card. Clearly this machine is not the top of the line computer. But the beauty of the old Mac Pros and the beauty of the new Mac Pros that just came out is upgradability. So, with that in mind, I went onto eBay and Amazon and I got some parts. For the CPUs, I went on eBay and ordered a kit, the wrong kit, mind you, and that kit came with two X5690s, which are six core processors running at 3.46 gigahertz. And so what that means is now this machine will have 12 cores. I ordered four 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM, giving it 64 gigs of RAM. I got an extra PCI card with USB-C and USB 3 ports. I also put in a one terabyte SSD. And for a video card, I got an RX 580, which is pretty much the fastest card that you can get for this machine before having to modify the power supply, which I might do in the future, but for now, I'm not gonna mess with that. And because this computer actually didn't come with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I actually ordered a kit that has a new Airport Extreme card. Although I am still waiting on one cable, which has been a really tricky thing to find, but I finally got it. Now, the trickiest part about this whole process was absolutely changing out the CPUs. Now, the 4,1 .1 has a weird thing where the heat sinks are actually what keep the pressure on the CPUs to the motherboard. So it's this weird balancing act of tension and if you don't have it screwed in properly, it just won't boot. Or if you have it screwed in way too tightly, uh, you could just break the motherboard and you have to start from scratch. So, this was my first time putting in CPUs. And I still thought it would go way better than it did. Originally when I was filming this, I really thought that this would go first time, but I did not have the right kit. And the right kit, they come with little washers that actually raise up the heat sinks. And there's lots of other methods that you can use to deal with this. I actually went without washers. There's definitely a way to do it. But the washers, I think, probably are the safest way. And this kit comes with all the things you need to do this properly. I highly recommend getting the 2009 kit, not the 5,1 kit. That was the problem I went with because the CPUs I got were not delated. Means that there's this little metal lid on top of the CPU, but the four comma ones use delated CPUs and you can buy those as well. And I would highly recommend you get those and go that route. So let me just walk you through a bit about how I swapped out those CPUs because that was probably the hardest part. So first of all, you take the tray out, you unscrew the heat sinks from the motherboard. And when you do that, the CPU comes off with it. And so from there, you take the CPU off, you clean it with a swab with rubbing alcohol or something similar. My kit came with something. I used a blower to clean up everything before I started putting anything more onto it. I wanted a clean surface for when I was working on things again. And then from there, I put the CPUs on, I put on the thermal paste, and then I put the heat sinks back on and screwed them down. Now, when I screwed them down, I really only got the screws to go in until they would stop. 
and I was pretty confident that that would be enough and it would all work. Now, when I went to start up my computer, it just would not boot. It just gave me a black screen, no chime, nothing. It was dead in the water and I was terrified. I was worried that all the money I had just spent was down the drain. But there's a key word in how to tighten the CPUs and that is hand tight. Now, when I thought of that originally, I was thinking you didn't want to over crank it and put way too much pressure on because you would break the pins. But it turns out you need a bit of pressure. So I gave about a quarter turn more, just enough to add a little bit of pressure all around, do it evenly. Also do it in a star pattern, just like you would for changing a tire. So I added a little bit more pressure, turned it on, and I got my chime and it worked. Now that it's all set up, it's working, we should probably talk about performance. Did it actually make sense for me to get this older computer than my current machine, or should I have upgraded to a better, newer machine? Maybe even waited for that fancy Mac Pro? And the answer is definitely in the data. So we use Geekbench as a simple way to, you know, kind of compare these computers and see how they kind of stack up. So starting off the 2009 Mac Pro when I first got it. it scored roughly around a 13,000. Now my 2013 iMac scored about 14 to 15,000. So the 2009 when I first got it actually wasn't that far behind my iMac. I was expecting it to be a bit behind, but I was surprised that it wasn't that far behind. And so now that I've done all these updates, looking at the score, I'm getting scores at about uh, 24, 25,000. And I've seen scores up to about 30, and I think if I had used deleted CPUs, I could probably get closer to 30, but 25,000 is not too bad. Now, one of the first things I did was went to one of my more challenging projects. It was a 4K, 10-bit project with lots of visual effects, uh, green screen, that sort of thing. And it was something where on my old, iMac, I would have to run it at quarter res to have any sort of like somewhat realistic playback. But with my new machine, I can definitely run it at full res and it's totally fine. Now after performance, the next real thing to look at is price. And this was something that I was looking at because I knew that if I was gonna go this route, a monitor would have to be in the cost. And I also knew that I would be able to get a better monitor if I did this. Now, when I was looking at PCs versus Macs, I was actually coming out to about the same price for similar results of what I was looking at. So I would need a good screen, so that would change my price regardless. And to get the A-Core and the good graphics card, I was kind of looking at four to five grand for each computer, whether it was an iMac, a PC, or if it was gonna be a Mac Mini with an eGPU. And for the Mac Pro and all the upgrades, I've spent about $1,200, which gives me a lot of room to buy a display. And so I got myself a 4K LG uh, display. It was a really great 32 inch display with some really good color accuracy. I'll put a link in the description and I'll probably do a video on it later. I want some time to really get to know the monitor before I really start talking about it because I wanna see if this is actually a monitor that I really like. So for this computer a monitor setup, I have spent $2,400, which is about $1,600 cheaper than what I was looking at for a brand new computer, whether that was a PC or a Mac. So personally, I am super thrilled about this outcome. So the main point of this video, is the 2009 Mac Pro still worthwhile? Absolutely. Considering what's on the market now, and considering everything that you can get for that kind of budget, it's really great. Are there downsides? Absolutely. The 2009 Mac Pros are not nearly as supported as any of the other machines moving forward. So there's a few things that are troubling about the 2009 Mac Pro. There are definitely things that are not as supported as I would like them to be. Uh, but that being said, there's also groups who are working at keeping these machines going. I recently joined a Facebook group called Mac Pro Upgrades. I highly recommend checking that place out if you're considering going this route because you can probably find a lot of deals and a lot of solutions and make fewer mistakes than I did for sure. So if you are considering going this route and getting one of these machines, definitely check that out. Do your research. This definitely requires some thought and how you're gonna set it up, but it is absolutely worth it. Because now we've got a high-end Mac Pro 
that will take care of me for a while. So, if this video has been helpful, please hit the thumbs up. If you're interested in more videos about filmmaking gear and how I make everything work for my business, uh, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any comments about Mac versus PC, just fight about it in the comments. Yeah, just fight about it in the comments. It's a good time. Everyone loves to fight about Mac versus PC. Pick a side, get some pitchforks, get some torches, and go at it. That's what the comment section's for, isn't it? Until next time, just, I'll see you later. So, scram.